What's good, family? You tuned into the fix, your source for faith infused hip hop, R and B, and poetry. It's your boy DJ Focus checking in and listen. I'm gonna have to start charging y'all for these exclusives, man. Y'all ain't been hitting my cash app like y'all supposed to, but y'all about to hit me, man. We are live in Atlanta, Georgia, right now uh, at the Infinity Music Festival, and I'm joined by listen, man. You a producer, DJ? Mm -hmm. What else you do, man? Uh, huh? Actor? <laughs> I was about to give a real movie circle. star. I know you was. I know. <laughs> look, look, that was your Marty moment. You should be at yeah, the yeah, party yeah. for Social Club right there. Don't yeah. why you mess it up. <laughs> I threw him in the lobby and he messed it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man, yeah, yeah. I'm going for president. Yeah. Listen, my brother. Uh, What's up? Jimmy. How you doing? How you? I'm good, man. You sure? Yeah, I'm good. Talk about this. It's nice this. and warm down here. I'm wearing a jacket because right. it looks nice. But he always has here. these. Let me tell you something. I've been, I've been watching you on the gram. You always have these nice jackets on. Where are you getting all these custom jackets from, man? Or you, you That's just, a great idea or a great question. I, I don't know why I said idea. Uh, this one in particular, my dude, uh, Johnny Reed in Sandusky has a store called CR Exchange. Like he has his own branded clothes and stuff like that. Okay. And uh, I don't know if it's because I'm getting older, but I choose to like shop local over like some corporate store. Like, yeah. And that's either with clothes, shoes, restaurants, you know what I mean? But he, he really does have some dope stuff. He always hooks me up, takes care of me and so. Shout out to Johnny Reed. So talk a little bit about, uh, share a little bit of your faith story on how you kind of develop your own personal relationship with God yeah. before we get into everything else you do. Absolutely. So I, I, I come from a Christian home, uh, born and raised. Uh, my grand, or, I'm sorry, my great grandfather planted a church. My cousin has planted a church. Uh, we just have always uh, been a Jesus focused family. However, um, I truly discovered who Jesus was for myself at like my teen years. We used to go to like a summer camp uh, up in Michigan mm -hmm. for like you know like five days something like that. And it'd be like all teens like my age. They have Bible studies, they have worship and stuff like that. And it was during those years that I made it my own personal story, and I really gave my heart to God. And it's funny because I remember during those years, people who didn't even know me was coming up to me and be like, "Hey man, the Lord's telling me to tell you you're going to be a worship leader one day. You're going to lead wow. like hundreds and thousands of people in worship." And, you know, at the time, you're thinking, like, man, I don't play guitar. I don't sing. I don't play piano. Like, I'm not Kirk Franklin or Chris Tom, nothing like that. It wasn't making sense to me. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until, like, a few years ago. Uh, I was actually DJing um, in Bogota, Colombia. And it, in the set, I had a worship song that I played. And there was, like, hundreds or maybe a couple thousand people in, in the audience. Mm -hmm. God spoke to my heart during that moment and said, I told you you need to lead worship. Wow. It wasn't the way you thought. But you're leading worship. I was like, wow. You could be a DJ and drive a beats and a worship leader? Oh, because I noticed God has a way of doing that. Like, he tells us a promise. And we have our way that we think it's going to play out. And God always does it in a different way. That's amazing. So, yeah. That's amazing. So, how did you even get into DJing? Um, honestly, man, I, I grew up just a lover of music. Um, I played drums at an early age. Played drums at church. Um, I did play, I ended up playing guitar like a little bit after high school, but that was just more or less like write music. Uh, I would make beats and stuff for my friends. And uh, in 2018, or not 18, 2008, 2009, um, I was just going from like job to job. Like, you know, it was like a lot of factory work where I live and, you know, mm -hmm. they'd hire you in and then they'd lay you off a month later. And I just got really tired of it. An opportunity presented itself for, hey, we need, uh, we need DJs to work full time at this resort, Kalahari. Absolutely. Okay, shout out to Kalahari. And um, they said, you know, we're we going to pay $14 an hour all the hours you want. I'm like, let's go. I had no experience as a DJ, but I had experience of, like, running in front of house and, like, being in a church and just, you know, being comfortable on stage. So they brought me in. They trained me, and I did that job for a year and a half. After about a year and a half, they shut the program down, and they said, we just don't want 